Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Woke Hollywood Slam with massive cuts to pay billions for sports rights. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Only non-woke movies are making money. And the studios are catching on. We see this with Inside Out 2. But now there's even a bigger threat to woke content. Content that nobody actually wants, but is supposed to be good because of representation. Sports rights. Sports rights costing billions of dollars. The only kind of steady revenue generator that studios have. There's tremendous competition for audience. And because of that competition, studios are forced to pay billions for sports content and cut back on everything else. Coming from Business Insider, Hollywood is facing a dire threat, sports. And from the WallStreetJournal.com, NBA near $76 billion TV deal, a defining moment for media and sports. And as they say in this article, the NBA sweepstakes have turned into a defining moment for the TV industry, highlighting the anxieties of traditional media companies about the collapse of cable and their uncertain futures in the streaming world. It has put front and center the paradox that sports content is outrageously expensive, but also critical to own in an industry in which it's one of the few reliable ways to draw in audiences. Quote, entertainment is a swamp and sports is the only firm ground. Media companies are vying for NBA rights that are crucial for audience retention despite high costs. Tech giants like Apple and Amazon have joined the sports right tussle escalating competition. Total entertainment spending could decline by as much as 8% to fund sports, according to one estimate. As studios' cable businesses collapse, they need to pay and do whatever it takes to maintain whatever audience they can. It's the only reliable thing the entertainment industry has left, except when they go back to actually focusing on what people want. From The Hollywood Reporter, Box Office Inside Out 2 sourced to record $100 million second weekend in the U.S., it's $724 million globally. Inside Out 2 is even bigger than Barbie at this point. So Pixar is not going back to the agenda-driven movies anytime soon. Sports has increasingly become the star of the show for big TV companies, and its ascent is sending a shiver down Hollywood's spine. The TV giants have recently been battling for NBA broadcasting rights, a fight that has spotlighted how important sports content has become to keeping audiences despite its ever-soaring costs. But the land grab for sports, with billions of dollars being spent, could have dire consequences for a shaky Hollywood ecosystem. Quote, the growing relative importance of sports is another looming problem for an already struggling Hollywood. Sports media rights have never been more expensive. But media companies keep paying up. Why? They need sports to keep their declining TV businesses afloat and grow their streaming services. And it's not about just growing the streaming service. They need to maintain the streaming service. It's another reason not to cancel. And cancellations for streaming services are a massive problem for Hollywood. At the same time, tech companies like Apple, Google, and Amazon have been gobbling up media rights, expanding the market for sports content. Could you imagine having to compete with Apple and Google and Amazon if you're one of these studios? The NBA is close to sealing a $76 billion 11-year rights contract that would be two and a half times the amount of its last one, according to the Wall Street Journal. Comcast NBC, Disney's ESPN, Amazon, and Warner Brothers Discovery are in contention. But the biggest contracts have gone to the NFL, whose $110 billion 11-year media deal of 2021 was nearly double its previous deal. Standard & Poor's estimated the value of U.S. sports rights has doubled in 10 years. As media companies, their businesses already wobbly, for example, Warner Brothers dealing with its multi-billion dollars of debt. Consider how they're going to fund sports. They could look no further than their entertainment budgets, which encompass TV shows like dramas and comedies. Those budgets are four times as big as sports, according to Shapiro. So if the budgets are four times as big as their sports budgets, and they cut those budgets by 5% or 10% or 8%, as this one report is saying, that will subsidize the extra cost of handling sports. Which also means, forget it if you have woke TV shows for representation that no one really cares about and watches. It doesn't mean this is the end of woke TV shows and movies. It just means it's closer and closer to the end of shows and movies that nobody wants to watch. 
A shift in budgets from entertainment to sports is already playing out in some places. NBC parent Comcast is expected to cut programming costs to help pay for NBA rights. Viewers have since learned NBC's Late Night with Seth Meyers will lose its house band. From The Hollywood Reporter, Late Night with Seth Meyers is losing its house band. Budget cuts to the show will mean the end of the 8G band when the show begins a new season in the fall. Netflix also seems to be thinking of its new NFL deal as a replacement for mid-budget movies. When asked about the cost of the deal at a Moffat Nathanson conference in May, senior Netflix executive Spencer Wang said he would characterize each game as roughly the size of one of our medium-sized original films. Netflix already has been releasing fewer shows, and its former film chief laid out a plan to make fewer original movies. From Bloomberg, Netflix cuts over 100 shows in major programming shift. After years of spending more on new shows, the company is finally shrinking how much new it has to offer. And from Business Insider, Netflix is pulling back on movies, worrying filmmakers who also face a grim year at the box office. And of course, not all filmmakers are suffering. Inside Act 2 is doing just fine because it's not a woke movie. But if you've got a personal story to tell that no one really wants to see, those movies are not getting funded. Not by the box office and now not by Netflix. The number of TV shows across the industry has been declining since the 2022 end of the peak TV era. The rise of sports could accelerate that downward trend. Well, of course the rise of sports is going to accelerate that downward trend. How are you going to pay these absurd multi-billion dollar deals off for sports rights, actually get viewers for that, and at the same time fund these extra shows that no one wants to see? It may seem counterintuitive that media companies have to pay more for sports media rights given their traditional TV audiences are shrinking as more people cut the cord. But sports programming continues to draw huge live audiences on a predictable schedule. 93 of the 100 most watched programs in 2023 were sports. And 13 of the last Super Bowls got more than 100 million viewers, with this year's game attracting a record 123 million people according to Nielsen. With sports betting now legal in most states, people's interest in live sports could continue to grow. A variety report showed that sports gamblers watch sports more than usual when they're betting on them, especially NFL fans. Well, that would make sense if I bet in a game, I'd want to see what happened. The live nature of sports makes it a must-buy for advertisers with time-sensitive product launches like cars or movies they need to promote. That would be if you're trying to promote something and you're saying, look, I need a certain number of eyes on this. I'm launching something. I want attention to this. I want it to be part of something people talk about in social media. You do need to get attention and you need guaranteed attention. It's not going to help you if you think you're going to get viewers, but you don't get viewers for your ad if it completely throws off your launch. It's why primetime ad rates for sports cars could be as much as 25% higher than entertainment. Well, no one records sports and watches it the next day. It's still appointment viewing, and advertisers find that very attractive. As sports content has become a sure thing, TV shows and movies look increasingly risky. Entertainment viewing has shifted to streaming on demand, where it's lost some of its water cooler effect. But what these companies are trying to tap into is an existing fandom. As the Hollywood franchises have become fatigued, sports has not. The fans find you, so it's about fandom and franchises you can bet on. Predictability, not undermining brands. Sports is very predictable. For the viewers, for the advertisers, for the studios, that's why people are investing in it. Because if you invest in something that's unpredictable, you're not usually going to get a good return on investment. So you can take a risk on something, like bet on a business venture. If it's got a potential to return 10 to 1, 100 to 1, 1,000 to 1, hey, that's exciting. Otherwise, if it has a chance of breaking even, but there's only, say, a 10% chance or 5% or 1% chance of that happening. Like, would you invest in another Indiana Jones movie if the same people were going to make it? No, you certainly wouldn't because it would be guaranteed to lose money. It's not game over after the NBA either. Media companies have been aggressively pursuing other secondary sports to maintain their value to distributors and advertisers, as Warner Brothers Discovery recently did by picking up some college football games. Sports prominence was noticeable in the parade of athletes at the Cannes Lions Advertising Conference, as well as the recent upfronts, the annual TV ad showcase where sellers from Amazon to Warner Brothers Discovery made their pitches to advertisers. All this has dire implications for entertainment budgets, which media companies have already been trimming after overspending to build streaming businesses.
Quote, who's paying for all this? The other side of the house, the ubiquitous media and ad industry consultant Michael Kassan said. All you have to do is go to the upfront, and it's sports and news, sports and news. If you're a producer on the entertainment side of the business, you're seeing less buying, you're seeing less budgets, because sports actually brings in advertising revenue. Shapiro predicted sports could increase to represent more than 40% of total industry content spending by 2030, double the 20% it represented in 2023, while entertainment spending could decline as much as 8% a year in that same period. 8% a year. 8% and then another 8% then another 8%. And an even bigger problem for Hollywood. Generative AI tools could reduce Hollywood production costs, freeing up more money for them to spend on sports. Quote, sports spending is absolutely coming at the expense of film and TV, complained a creative side figure at an entertainment company who was granted anonymity to speak candidly about internal divisions. The rising importance of sports also pretends a power shift at media companies, where sports has traditionally been treated dismissively, with primetime slots given to entertainment, news, and other shows. One of Brothers Discovery's CEO, David Zaslov, took heat for saying in 2022 that, quote, we don't have to have the NBA in anticipation of upcoming contract talks. He later walked back the comment, but it raised a larger question all media companies face. How much sports do they actually need to keep audiences and advertisers hooked? If you were going to predict the future of Hollywood, you would certainly say sports is going to be a big part of it. It doesn't matter if you're Disney or Warner Brothers Discovery or whatever's left of Paramount or whoever buys out Paramount. Media companies who rely on live audiences need sports. That means they have to cut back on everything that's not sports. It also means they have to compete with Apple and Amazon and Google and whoever else the next multi-billion or trillion dollar company is that wants attention from viewers. If all show producers have to offer are some new woke takes on some brands that no one actually wants to see, those things aren't gonna fly. Hollywood is well past the point that they can put out whatever they want and pretend that the work is important and people want to see it. Netflix won't pay for it, viewers won't watch it, studios can't afford to make the kind of things anymore that people don't actually want to see. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you again soon with another story. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.